So, uh, yeah, my name is Mukunda Basome. I live here. And, uh, I'm an American from Boulder, Oregon. I'm a college graduate. I'm uh, sort of semi-retired. Putting out, you know, you know the example. So I'm going to just talk for about 15 or 20 minutes, and then I think we'll turn on these. And the bees for everyone here? So uh, one of the say who Krishna is, Krishna is another, is a Sanskrit name for God. Krishna means God. And uh, Krishna consciousness is kind of a science of God rather than just about God that you believe in. It's not about God living in heaven and sitting on a cloud in a big chair with a big beard. Krishna incarnates. Krishna incarnated 5,000 years ago. When Krishna incarnated, he grew up as a young child. He was born in a family of devotees in India. And he manifested different characteristics. When we talk about love of God, it's, it's kind of a, a big concept. So we think of God as a force, but here Krishna is a person. And Krishna sometimes cried real tears. So I want to talk a little about today about the concept of love and loving God and God loving others. Sometimes it's manifested in different ways, love. When Krishna was a small child, <coughs> sometimes he cried tears, and there were real tears, but he, in a sense he was acting. There's a, there's a, a phrase, Nitya Nitya Dara Dara, in, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's one of the scriptures that we follow that Krishna is, you know, plays a perfect role. He can be a perfect child, a perfect son, a perfect dancer, a perfect actor. Everything that's done according to, to uh, Vedic literature that's done by Krishna is, is perfect. So whatever it's done, it's, it's done in a perfect way. Sometimes Krishna is, is, is not satisfied to be just worshipped. And uh, an example is a very wealthy person is, is accustomed to eating very sumptuous and, and very gourmet kind of foodstuffs. But sometimes that same person wants to eat something very plain. Sometimes a very a person who is accustomed to eating a very opulent foodstuffs likes to eat something very plain. It's just a natural form of enjoyment. So sometimes Krishna likes to be be uh, rebuked, even though most of the time people worship him, he likes to be rebuked. This occurred when Krishna grew up as a small child when his mother and father sometimes rebuked him or chastised him for doing something wrong. There's an instance that's similar to this. You weren't born yet, but when, when Queen Victoria ruled the world, she had a prime minister whose name was Gladstone. This is a real incident. Someone came to see the Prime Minister had an appointment, and this person showed up right on time. But the, the Prime Minister's servant, or secretary, said he'd have to wait because he's, Mr. Blaston is very busy now. So the person had to wait. After waiting one hour, he became curious. He began to wonder, what is the Prime Minister doing? Why is he so late? So he peeked in, and through the door where the Prime Minister was, and he saw the Prime Minister down on all fours, who was like, like a dog or a horse, and he was being pulled by his grandchildren. That's, that's what he was doing. That's what he was so busy doing that he couldn't see the person who had come to see him who had made appointment. The indication is that, that even someone who is used to being venerated or, or worshipped gets sometimes an equal or more pleasure by doing something very humble and, uh, and acting in, a, in an inferior role, a subordinate role, to someone he loves. This is, this is part of what Krishna does. When Krishna was on this planet, there was a, a, a famous war that took place between, it was an all-in-one family. Uh, Krishna took the role of he said, I'm not going to take part in this role. He, he confided in, in Arjuna, his, his student. He said, I'm not going to fight, but I'll, I'll, I'll be on your side. So I'll do whatever you want to do, but I won't fight. He said that he would become the driver of, of Krishna's chariot. So 
I, I mean, I've got Arjuna's chariot. So Arjuna agreed. Okay, be the, be the driver of my chariot. But on the other side, the toilets, this is a little complicated, but if you study the literature, you'll find out what's the story behind all this. There was Bhishma, who was a, a, considered the grandsire of this clan, and he was a very elderly person. In spite of being very elderly, he was a, a very good fighter, a bowman. But because he was related to Arjuna, he wasn't fighting wholeheartedly. So one of his mates on, on his side rebuked him. He said, you're not fighting vigorously because you have affection for your grandson, Arjuna. Vishnu then assured this, this other person that he would the next day, he would fight very vigorously to the point of either killing Arjuna, who was his grandson, or making Krishna break his promise not to fight. And if, he were to, if Krishna would attack him as a supreme person, he could attack and kill Bhishma. So this was the promise that Bhishma gave him. And Duryodhana, who was his mate on, on that side, was satisfied. The next day, Bhishma fought very vigorously, fought against Arjuna, to the point of... of of almost killing him. His chariot was was kind of dismembered. The wheels came off. It, it was he was almost dead. And at this time, Krishna broke his promise of never fighting. He picked up the chariot wheel and began to spin it around like a, a, a discus that he carries. It's a deadly discus. You've seen pictures of Vishnu maybe holding this discus. It's a, it severs people's heads off. It cuts people's heads off. So. What happened was that Bhishma caused Krishna to break his promise to protect his devotee. When this happened, because Krishna was attacking Bhishma, Bhishma began to shoot arrows at it. And it's described in Srimad Bhagavatam that those arrows, Krishna was feeling the arrows as the love bites of his lover in, in the Vaishnava poetry. Those arrow, uh, arrows were described as Krishna feeling them as love bites because that's a kind of relationship that Bhishma and Krishna had. It, it's called the chivalrous, chivalrous rasa. They had that kind of... And Krishna really relished this. But this, this whole thing had to stop because in, in those days, wars always stopped at sundown. At sunrise they began and they stopped at sundown. So this occurred right at sundown. So the, the, the thing was never carried out. There's a famous picture of painting of... of uh, Krishna attacking Bhishma and Arjuna having regained consciousness is trying to prevent him because he doesn't, you know, he has a relationship with Bhishma, so that was going on. Anyway, these are some of the, the, the ways that, that Krishna is, is worshipped, not always expecting and desiring awe, being worshipped in awe and reverence, but sometimes wanting to, to uh, be attacked or chastised by his devotees. This is part of the, the science of God. So maybe you can pass the beads around and we can how many? Does anybody got it, please? There's some. Yeah, if you don't have it, raise your hand. The way we chant on these beads, and this is called, we were, what we were doing earlier is called Kirtan, this is called Japa. And uh, those are the words of the mantra there, in case you forget. On the wall, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And with the beads, we just use the thumb and the uh, third finger. And we start here on the summit bead, or the, the bead next to the summit bead. The each beads are different sizes, but we have probably most of them are graduated. So these are, and if we chant, we chant on, on each bead, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 And then move on to the next bead, using the same two fingers. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we'll start again, and if we do this all together, theoretically, we'll, we'll stop at the same time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Krishna, 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 Krishna,
So my dear friends, um, thank you for all the devotees for joining us. For the groups of guests who are working today, so I'm glad you know, we'll just go back to our, our normal jobs. If anybody I'll take that to the kitchen. If anybody would like to um, who's free today, who'd like to help out a little bit, there's, they asked me for some extra people in the kitchen. They just asked me to call just before this meeting for the Sunday things. And for the woofers and guests, if any of you would like to stay behind, I think Maharaj may stay for half an hour.